You're watching Seatome TV. Knowledge is power. I'm interested uh, to understand a bit more about genetic testing and because you talk about how, you know, even uh, a very well regarded test like foundation medicine, mm -hmm. which is a nice big panel, um, has been around for a long time um, and something that you use often. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about how uh, the way that they report their information or certain things that they report can be uh, confusing or missing certain pieces of information. So there's so many different genetic tests out there. How does somebody know uh, if their doctor is recommending, for example, a sim single gene test or, or a panel that looks at 10 or 15 genes? And again, Foundation Medicine looks at over 350, um, just so you know kind of what's possible out there. Um, but how would somebody know whether what's being recommended to them is actually a, a, a test that works well or will provide them with the information that they're looking for? Because there's lots of genetic tests that don't really go very deep and look at much, I know. Um, well, I think that's an excellent question. Thank um, you. I think uh, the important <laughs> thing to consider, once again, uh, to back up the bus, is that there are a ton of different possible mutations mm. that can occur in cancers and that can um, cause cancers. Oh. Mm -hmm. so, so the more you're looking at, the better. The more information you're looking at. Um, the second thing that is really important to consider is that for the last you know, 20 or so uh, years since we've identified DNA and uh, transcribed the human genome, I think what's really important to understand is that uh, there's just a ton of information coming our way. Mm -hmm. um, every time a new mutation is discovered, it causes a cancer. Uh, right away, all the drug companies start designing drugs to target that particular mutation. Mm -hmm. Now, that mutation may only occur in a certain percentage of the population with that type of cancer, but for that population, that mutation, or that drug could be a cure. Mm -hmm. So, to give you an example of the scale of this information, um, there's roughly 225 to 250 different cancer conferences internationally every year of varying sizes. One of the largest um, that happens every year, ASCO, uh, it, it can have up to seven or 8,000 different presentations mm -hmm. or abstracts. So the number is overwhelming. Yeah. So wait, wait, one conference out of 200 plus each year has seven to 8,000 8, different yes. papers or studies being yes. presented. Yeah, and maybe one of those is on a genetic mutation that is unique to you. And it shows how a certain combination of drugs work incredibly well mm -hmm. or don't work. Um, and you would never have access to that information if you didn't have someone curating your sequencing data. Right. So this, the, the key, um, you know, most of the sequencing tests are very good. Um, they all use mm -hmm. the same protocols. They typically use the same sort of, um, you know, third generation, second generation uh, sequencing. It's called next generation. Um, and most of them are going to identify those mutations very well. Whether they report them, how they report those mutations, uh. and um, what you do with that information is really key to cancer. Okay, so the so apparently many genetic tests are of good quality. Yes. You don't have to worry about most that. Yes. It's how the results get interpreted and utilized. And applied. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for watching Seatome TV. Subscribe below and stay informed.